comes to preventing running related shin injury, growing research shows a clear relation between forfeit strike running and reduced mechanical loading on the shins because typically when you strike forefoot first, not too high up on the toes, but rather a much flatter foot placement striking just ahead of the arch when you run, you do so with a bent knee. The knee bend at touchdown seems to be a normative response when you strike forefoot first when running, whereas in many cases involving landing heel first when running, you often end up overreaching with the landing foot, which accompanies an unbent knee upon touchdown. The problem with this is the shin is tilted farther away from the center of mass, which is the torso and the head. This landing configuration at touchdown and heel strike running produces higher levels of impact stress on the lower leg due to the relatively longer distance separation between the initial foot strike position and the center of mass. The problem with the longer distance separation between the center of mass and the initial foot strike position in running and how the shins may get burnt out from it is that number one, greater muscular effort and mechanical work from the lower leg may be needed to accelerate the shin over the fixed foot because the foot and the shin are positioned farther away from the center of mass. And number two, the break force period is extended, whereby the further away the initial foot strike position is from the center of mass when running, the longer of time the body abruptly grinds to a halt. This extended break force period gives rise to a multitude of impact force variables in larger amounts, such as a high collisional force, compressive waves, torsional loads, and tensile bone stress, just to name a few. But when we summon these specific forms of impacts, it could really render the shin to injury more so than in forfeit strike running. When you strike forefoot first when running, there is a shorter exposure to the brake force because the distance separation between initial foot strike position and the mass of the body is shorter. Also, in this way, the shin is tilted less away from the center of mass. Rather, the shin is aligned more vertically or more straight up and down, closer to under the knee and the foot. And equally important, the shin is positioned closer to the mass of the body in this way, the lower leg doesn't have to overwork to accelerate over the fixed foot. And equally important, there's a reduction in opposing net forces on the shins on account of a shorter break force period. So essentially, forfeit strike running may do a better job at improving the shins positioning at touchdown. And another way it may do so is that when you land with the forfeit strike when running, because it helps bring in the foot to land closer to the center of mass, may also produce a wider step width at touchdown, meaning the foot may have a better chance at landing slightly farther away from the midline and not crossing the midline when the foot crosses the midline at touchdown during running, the shin is aligned less vertically at touchdown. In a 2014 study in the Journal of Biomechanics, which is linked down below this video in the description box, has shown that this kind of misalignment of the shin at touchdown was actually more stressful on the shin because it led to higher levels of tissue compression and torsional loading on the shin, whereas when step width slightly widened at touchdown during running, the shin was more aligned vertically at touchdown, which directly reduced compression on the back of the shin and on the middle of the shin and reduced tissue loads on the shins as well. It also resulted in more controlled foot pronation, meaning that at touchdown and during the stance phase of running, a wider step width was more effective at keeping the foot in neutral line and thus the foot was less likely to shift into overstraining extreme positions. Furthermore, hip adduction and knee internal rotation was also kept within a safer range of tolerance as well, all of which had the main effect of reducing opposing ground reaction forces, mechanical loading, and horizontal strain on the shin as compared with a cross over running gait, which involves the foot crossing over the midline at touchdown. Basically, running with crossover footsteps may produce mechanical entanglements that may result in opposing forces on the shins, but may also push lower leg mechanics outside a range of tolerance, making running even more stressful on the shins.
So how can forfeit strike running potentially have more of a corrective effect on a crossover running gait versus heel strike running? And therefore, how can forfeit strike running encourage a more vertically aligned shin with less opposing forces at touchdown? The same study found that a forfeit strike landing when running naturally resulted in a lesser overstrike angle at touchdown, meaning the foot landed closer to the knee, hips, and the body's mass. The researchers also highlighted that because of the reduced overstrike angle at touchdown and forfeit strike running, less time was spent overreaching with the foot upon touchdown because when striking forfeit first when running, the foot physically doesn't have enough time to swing out all the way through and around the stance limb as compared with the heel strike landing when running, which most often encourages an unbent knee upon touchdown, which typically causes an overreach of the foot in front of the body's mass, you end up reaching with the foot too far in front of the body when the knee joint is hyperextended upon touchdown. And in doing so, there becomes more time for the foot to swing all the way out through and around the stance limb and potentially cross over the body center. Comparatively, in forefoot strike running, it's the reduced overstride angle upon touchdown that's directly related to a wider step width, which in turn may do a better job at instantly mobilizing a more vertically aligned shin at touchdown because striking forefoot first when running usually produces greater knee flexion upon and at touchdown, which makes it easier to quickly assemble the foot to land closer to underneath you and may therefore result in only weakly interacting forces on the shins so I just thought it would be very meaningful to outline the mechanical contributions that accompany forfeit striking when running that may help make the shins much less prone to injury as compared with heel strike running. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, feel free to hit the thumbs up button as well as the subscribe button if you haven't already, where you will stay more informed on heel strike running versus forfeit strike running. Thank you so much for listening and watching. Have fun out there on the roads and trails. Bye for now.